seems legit. Hello Legitimates, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little sticky note holder. Uh, super suitable, great scrap buster, so let's go. Right, so let's cut it out. Now there's two pieces of this, um, but I only need to cut one and just remember to rotate the other one. So that's, that's what's going on there. So we're going to go to the back. And when I cut one main interfacing this way. So what I actually want to do is I'll flip this one because I think then that will make it the right way. Because I'm going to trace it to the back. You can trace it to the front and it won't matter if you leave the mark that I'm, like the pen mark. It's just that mine's black and I won't see it. And then I'm going to take this weird little scrap and I'm going to flip it. And put that here now because I'm clever I'm gonna use that top edge so that I don't have to cut as many sides call me lazy call me efficient pick your choice doesn't matter I like to use straight edges where possible oh, see that was a crooked line look at me go okay so we've got both of those we also need this little strap so because it's going on the inside, I'm going to make it the green so it matches the inside. But you could also do it the opposite colour so it stands out. You have options. I'm taking my vinyl cutting scissors, chopping it out. You could also cut with a rotary cutter and a ruler if you wanted to. And I'm going to cut straight down like that so it's not attached to this. It's easier to cut when it's easier to manoeuvre. No, I will. All right, and then cut in and around. Now, again, it doesn't matter. You've got quite a grace period that we're going to chop off. So it doesn't matter if you get this wrong, really. I know I shouldn't say that, but it's true. It won't really matter as much as you think. And it's such a great scrap buster. And you can hang them off your bags and make them like part of your set or off the key rings. I do love a good key ring. Right, so what I'm gonna do here is just chop like that so it's not attached to the big part. Much easier to maneuver now. Chop. Now this is thinner. This is like a really thin, flexible vinyl, but because we're backing it onto the other one, it will not matter, which is awesome. It's also easier to cut if you lean your scissors on the mat. I don't know why, but it's easier than doing it in the air. Okay, so that's all that done. So see now, especially if it's directional. Mine wasn't directional, so I actually probably could have just cut two of them. But if you've done a pretty picture, you want to think about that. Right? So it's going to go like this. This will be the front. So you'd want the picture up the right way. That's all. So let's go to the machine. All right, so I've got here the uh, template. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to lay this here in line with that, pull it out. That's where that's gonna sit. So for right now, I'm just gonna put a clip on each end and I'm just going to tack it at the edge. This is just to hold it in place until we do our final stitching. I've got my stitch length on four. I'm doing black because the outside's black. But you could also put um, like one colour in the bobbin and a different colour on top so it matches if you wanted to. Uh, so this will all be cut off so it doesn't even need to be super neat. It's just like a tacking stitch. Then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to make sure all the tails are gone because that's important. Double-sided tape. Or if you've got glue or a tacky spray or I don't know what you've got going on. I'm using double-sided tape because I've got it. I don't have to wait for glue to dry because I personally hate that. Um, three strips with the three-quarter inch tape will be enough. Yes, I will be sewing through it. No, I don't have an issue with my machine. It doesn't gum up the needle. And then we're just going to take this one, line it up, 
stick it down uh, like that. Ta -da! So now it's like one piece. Now it says stitch with half an inch seam allowance. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab this. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm going to. I just want to measure half an inch in from the corner and the end, right? And I'm just going to put a little mark. Now this is erasable, but the reason I'm doing this is so that when I stop, I will be stopping at the half inch mark, and so I'll have really neat stitches. Right, so I've just marked the four points. Now you probably can't see that, but I can. See, I've kind of pushed the pen in a little bit, so it's dinted. So now I know where to start. Um, I'm gonna move the light so I can see better. Right there. So we're gonna stitch one stitch and then back stitch and then forward and then back. That's enough. Now, black was not the smartest thing for me to use because obviously it's tricky to see, but worth it. Now, right now I'm sewing through that extra layer, but this is thin enough that if you're on domestic, you are still fine. Nope, another stitch. Need half inch seam allowance. So this is where this bit gets tricky. Spin it round and around and around. This does have an embroidery design, um, but I feel like you don't really need to see that. Hobby was just off to work, sorry about that. Anyway, needle down pivot. The other option is, is that you could draw the line. Um, if you cut out the inside, that's your seam guide. Just a thought. All right, so we're gonna come down the end here. We're gonna get to the end. And then I'm gonna go back and forward, and back and forward, and then pull it out. And then trim off the tails. And that's what the inside looks like. It's got that extra little strip. Then, we're going to take some scissors and we're going to cut about an eighth of an inch or just close to but not through all those stitches. All right. We're making a nice edge. Now you didn't have to start in a corner. You could have started on a straight. I just chose the corner. Probably silly because you'll see it on the outside, but whatever. I do not regret my actions. So this is the tricky bit to cut because we're going to go around the curve now. But not impossible. Now I'm going to use plastic snaps for this because I have a million of them. And I don't really use them anymore. So this feels like the perfect opportunity. So you could match. This is now scrap. Then what we want to do, probably should have thought this through a little bit better, but we're going to line this up and then I'm going to punch out the holes that are in this. So to fix that problem, ugh, what I'm actually going to do is, not that one, I grabbed the wrong one. Of course I did. Hole punch through the paper first so that I can see it no matter which way I put it on. So there's one two and this one I've got I've got six mil um, grommets so I can actually put them in there I'll keep that here so I'm gonna just line this up on top like that now if you want to you can put some what are they called clips on there oops see it moved so you just want to re Line up the hole and the hole and then do the third hole like so. So that's all good. We can put that aside. Then we need to grab the snaps 
and the snap press. So here's my box of snap presses. I have a lot, like a lot, a lot, but I do use most of them most of the time. So I don't use these six mil ones that I'm about to use very often, but that's not to say that I don't use them. They're really good for punching like medium to small holes of things. So it's not a never problem, it's just a not often. But I do use them all because I think they're fantastic. Um, it does get pricey though, not going to lie. So I'm going to grab my black ones because black seems like the most obvious choice. This is my black, white and grey box. Like I said, I have, I have four, six of these boxes with different coloured palette tones in them all. It's ridiculous, I am aware of that. But that's right. I'll get through them eventually. So we're going to grab two of the spiky bits and then one male and one female part. And then I'm going to put the box away because I have spilt them before and it absolutely sucked. Now, these ones will hold the ends. You just pick them up like that. So we're going to do the end part first. So I want the stabby part to come through like this. So it's on the outside and then I'm just going to squish that down. You want to push really, really hard because these ones, if you've never played with the plastic ones before, that pointy end actually squishes to hold it in place. All right? And then I want to think about this because I always get it wrong. And then I want the other bit to come from the back because we're going to close it like that. And I always forget, so I like to actually play it out it makes sure that I'm never wrong. It takes an extra 10 seconds, but trust me, it takes longer to pull it out if you've done it wrong. So it's just good to check. Or you could have one on hand that is correct at all times and then just copy and use it as a diagram. Then, before we go any further, make sure they clip together because sometimes you might have to adjust one of them and squish it a little bit more than it is. That has happened to me before as well. Sometimes I didn't push hard enough and it was like too raised and in the way. So now we're going to punch the hole in this top part. So these are six mil grommets. Um, I never sold this on my website because I don't use it often enough in bag making videos to warrant it. But if you were going to start making these, I do highly recommend getting one. So we're just going to stab the hole. Don't be like that. I should have emptied it first. See how there's stuff stuck? You just put your poker in, push them all through, and then push them into the bin. Because sometimes, like right now, it didn't. Oh, that was because of the double sided tape. Okay. I'll forgive it this time. So now I've got some stringy bits just because of the type of fabrics I'm using. This is most likely coming from the black sparkle stuff. Not gonna lie. Right, and then we're gonna take that out. Now I don't have these in all the fun colors, but you can buy them in like a rainbow pack where you get black and orange and green and blue. I've only got um, the four basic metal colors. So let me grab that and then we'll install it. I'm going with gunmetal because gunmetal makes the most sense. Um, so these are the little grommets. They're very adorable. And then I've got in the, you know, plastic bag, the backings. It's important to use the backings, otherwise they don't quite work out and they fall out. So from the outside, I want the pretty side on the outside. So we're going to put that like that. And then these have a dint in them. You always want them convex, which is like a mountain. Concave is like a cave where it goes in. We want it to go out and stand on top and squish. And that's it. Oh, I put it in backwards, didn't I? Because that's the top, not that. Oh, well. That was silly of me. So I put that in backwards, everybody, uh, because the nice side was supposed to go on this side, not underneath. But I don't think I'm going to get that out, and I'm not going to bother because it's for me. It's fine. These are the sticky notes that it holds. So they are 50 by 38, or in inches, that's two inches by one and a half. 
And of course, we're going to use the green one because it's for me. I feel like that's an obvious statement at this point. So what we do is we take the back little slip pocket and we slide it under there and then the book stays in. Ta-da! And now this little bit, you can put a little chain in there. I actually have some chains, but it'll turn uh, they're outside in a different um, drawer. And then you can just hang it from a bag or your book. I don't know, whatever you want to hang it from. Your backpack, um, you could just keep it attached to a little D-ring inside your bag. And then you just need to have a pen on handy, obviously, to use them. But super cute. And this is in line with, like, the spine part of it as well. I'm sure you can get thicker ones. Uh, these are only 45 sheets. I don't, I just, these were the first ones I found in the size that I needed, and I just took them. Um... But there is room to have thicker sticky notes if required, which is good because, you know, bigger sizes. I could also probably stick those two together, but I'm not going to. But I could. But super, super cute and so quick and a great scrap buster and a great add-on. All right, guys, I'm going to go.